Buckle your seatbelt. It's time for another episode of the Prepper Recon Podcast. Whether your plan is to bug out or bug in, CampingSurvival.com has all of your preparedness needs, including fish antibiotics, long-term storage food, and water filters. Use coupon code PREPPERRECON for 5% off your order at CampingSurvival.com. Get prepared before disaster strikes. PrepperRecon.com offers Molly-compatible individual first aid kits for your home, auto, or bug-out bag. These kits have everything you need to address a traumatic injury, including an Israeli battle dressing, quick clot, EMT shear, suture kit, steri strips, tourniquet, tough strip bandages, and so much more. $99 includes shipping. Go to PrepperRecon.com and click the store tab at the top of the home page. Order today before it's too late. Today's guest is Bob Griswold of ReadyMadeResources.com. Bob, welcome back to the show. You know, it's always good to be here. I enjoy doing this program. And, you know, I have to say that um, after the program airs, I do get a lot of calls uh, from you know, grateful people, people that want to ask questions, and just things I learn from the people that call me, uh, because you, we have uh, a wide range of listeners that always show up at these programs, and they know stuff that none of us know. And and you know, if we know the Bible, the Bible says all every joint supplies, and so every person that that is in touch with what's going on has a contribution to bring to the benefit of us all, and that's why. I am such a strong proponent of networking, and especially now when we have relative peace in this country. We know that what we see happening overseas is coming to America. It's only a matter of time before one of these huge bombs goes off in, a, in one of our churches and or multiple, hap, multiple attacks on the same day. And so networking now with uh, believers and people that have good conscience that you can um, uh, you know, depend on and uh, you know, share resources, uh, share information, I, I think is probably one of the best preps people can do at this moment. Get to know a good core group of friends. Jesus had his concentric circle of friends, Peter, James, and John, the 12, the 70, and on. So we really need to cement those, you know, network friends that we can absolutely count on and, and, and just talk with them and say this, we, we all have this common goal. What are, what, what are our rules of operation? What can I count on you for? What can I depend on you for? You know, if I have food and you don't, can I depend on you to feed my family? Those are the things that if we discuss now, when we have relative peace, um, it will be much better off than trying to, you know, put the fire out from inside the house. Absolutely, so. and and I think it is it's so it's so important to stay vigilant and to stay aware. Uh, we look at the folks from Brussels. You know, it, they're not that far away from from Paris geographically, and yet I I don't think anybody was expecting an attack that day. Um, do we sort of have this this tendency as Americans to sort of get lulled to sleep because we haven't seen a nine eleven or a, a 2008 uh, housing crisis in a little while. Do we, do we sort of uh, get complacent about, about our, our level of alertness and preparedness? Well, you know, we were talking before the program and, you know, I, I meant to made this point that the Lord showed me one day that we are so focused on this financial collapse that we, that, that is going to happen, which I definitely believe will happen. We've spent ourselves into such debt that nobody can ever dig it out. So they'll have to do some type of thing to reorchestrate the world economy. And that's going to create a lot of hardship for a lot of people. But I will say this. As I hear so many Christians focus on this financial collapse, we totally ignore the moral collapse our nation has experienced, which I would describe as none other than catastrophic, um, you know, uh, beyond what we could even imagine. As a, as a young man at 16 when I became a Christian uh, many years ago, if I had seen today – as it is today, the moral climate of today, I would have thought Jesus was coming back tomorrow. I mean, that's how much we have fallen. In fact, I would put it this way. If we had experienced a financial collapse that was paramount or, or equal to the finance, I mean, the moral collapse we've already experienced, our money would be completely valueless. And so I asked the question, what do you think God values more, our finances or our moral, the finances of a nation or the morality of a nation? And I would say, from what I understand the scriptures teach, God is far, far more concerned with the moral collapse of our nation than he is with any financial collapse we might experience, because we do know the financial collapse is coming. This is a system built by man that's based on injustice, thievery, robbery, um, just unequal wages, defrauding people. I mean, it's all there in the central banking system that the world's developed, fiat currencies. But 
On the other hand, when we look at the days of, of what we're living and we see this absolute religious apostasy that has swept the world, uh, we see a cultural depravity that we just have a hard time grasping our mind around that, that if you, you know, just what happened in North Carolina, if I want to say if you're if you were born with the plumbing of a man, you have to use a man's bathroom. And if you're born with the plumbing of a woman, you have to use the bathroom determined for a woman. And, and to object to that, to say that no, men can go into women's bathrooms and so forth, you have this absolute outrage goes on. It, it, that's staggering in my, it, that, that a moral collapse like that could happen. You know, if we look at the days of Noah and the days of Lot, do you think the day before the flood came or the day before sulfur and fire rained down on uh, on um, um, Sodom and Gomorrah, did, do you think they were expecting anything different? Like tomorrow my life's going to end because God's going to rain judgment down on us. They weren't thinking that. They were thinking about their next pleasure, their next act of depravity, their next you know uh, TV program. I mean, they didn't have TV back then, but you know the next form of entertainment, something to stimulate. That's what they were thinking about and in America today. We are so absorbed with just the, 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 the secular, the worldly, that we totally ignore what God says concerning his judgment. If you look at Romans 1 and you look at the, the three-stage the three uh, abandonment God met, mentions in there, he abandons them, he abandons them, he abandons them. The, latter, the last abandonment is he gives them over to perverse sexual relations. We're there. That's the last stage before there's utter, utter destruction. We are there. So, um, you know, and then we just think, well, nothing happened today, and we're trapped in this normalcy bias. We've been slowly boiled alive. We see that this, the homosexual and perverse uh, uh, destruction of marriage, the uh, abortion. We just, I just saw right before we went on, the FDA has announced now it's going to allow the abortion pill to be used up to like 70 or 90 days after pregnancy. Um, we're massively in debt. We see this constant ethnic and war of violence. Our nation is being invaded. Violence. I mean, you just watch violence and violence and violence over people shooting each other. Just ethnic, religious violence happening. Um, our, our borders have been eviscerated. We have totally ignored 1,400 years of Islamic history and what it's done throughout civilization. It's estimated – some people put it between 270 and 400 million people have been killed uh, in the name of Islam. Uh, you know, uh, 110 million Africans that we know of, 80 million East Asian Indians were murdered in the name of Islam. Countless millions of women have been uh, sexually, uh, uh, you know, enslaved. In this country alone, the, F, uh, the CDC rep says that up to 500,000 women in America have been sexually mutilated. I mean, and yet we just think. Well, it's normal. What's on the football game? And I'm just this. This is a call today that I just God laid on my heart to call God's people to wake up, turn the TV off, turn the entertainment off, turn the iPhone off, and first of all, pray, seek God for His protection and His guidance. But then also start to learn, start to use the resources, the, the intellect God gave you, instead of being being trapped in an entertainment loop. Uh, Start to get back to learning. I was reading uh, Michael Snyder today from the Economic Collapse blog. had an had an article about how dumb Americans have become, how stupid we've become, and how you know this percentage and that percentage. And this couldn't identify the most basic things that are Americana. And he said the most the highest paid public employee in most of the states, over half the states in this country, is the football coach. The highest paid public employee. We, we have our priorities completely out of whack. And, and yet, so we just sit there and go to church week after week after week, watch the invasion, watch, watch the invasion of people who want to kill us. I mean, you, all you have to do is just watch these em imams say it over and over and over again. They want to kill us and convert us. Uh, we watch this invasion of our borders it's destroyed. We watch the destruction of our family, the destruction of the sanctity of marriage, the destruction of our posterity in the form of human life. And, and yet, Hey, it's normal. What's on the football game tonight? And and so it's a it's a call, a passion I have in my heart, a call to say, you know, turn it off, get back in tune with what God has, learn the the, the ways of God. You know, in, in the Psalms it says the people of God saw the works of God, but Moses knew his ways. That is such a difference. It, you know, people can people can watch the fireworks and go ooh and ah, but you get the pyrotechnician knows why it happens. And, and the man, man or woman who's in tune with God knows why it's happening, and, and you can't do that 
when you're dipping from the well of the world and the well of the Holy Spirit. You just can't do that. And so the call is to get ready, prepare, you know, make your mind vigilant, you know, awaken yourself and get ready for what is coming because I know and I know many people who are listening right now know that we are going to face the most difficult, horrendous times. The Bible tells us that there will be never another time like this since the creation of mankind. Get ready. So um, from there we can take it wherever we want to. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. The dollar's lost over 90% of its purchasing power since 1971. Silver, on the other hand, has proven to be a very stable form of wealth preservation over the years. And where do you buy silver? Silver.com, of course. Silver.com offers fantastic prices on gold and silver. Check out silver.com today. Ready-Made Resources is a trusted name in the prepper community because they've been around for 18 years. They offer great prices on night vision, water filtration, long-term storage food, solar energy components, and provide free technical service. Get ready for an uncertain future at readymaderesources.com. I just want to touch back on one of the things you said. Uh, you, you were talking about, yes, we're going to have an economic collapse. That's just that's just baked into the cake at this point. There's no way to turn that back. And then you're talking about the, the moral collapse. Um, in the Great Depression, we had obviously the economic collapse, but there was a good deal of, of, of goodwill amongst uh, people after the Great Depression. So people were a little bit more had that mindset of being their brother's keeper. And and I don't think we were, we're going to have that this time. Do you think that this, this idea of a complete moral breakdown on top of an economic breakdown, is that a recipe for disaster? Is this sort of the, the perfect storm coming? Okay. You know, why did Lot choose to go to Sodom? It's always a good biblical question to ask people. He had – Abraham said, you can go that way and I'll go this way. Lot chose to go to Sodom. He had seen what was in Sodom. You know, remember, he was captured and had been captured and taken to Sodom, and Abraham went and rescued him. He had seen Sodom. He had seen the prosperity, all the goodies, the tantalizing things. He had seen it. And I really think Lot in his heart, when he came to that decision, chose Sodom because, man, I remember that. Lots of nice stuff. I mean, you know, there was nice-looking women. There was this. There was that. All these pleasures of the world were in Sodom. We are a, we are a people in this country who are saturated with the pleasures of the world, the pornography, the drugs we use. We consume 90% of the world's opiates. Um, we, one in five Americans is on an antipsychotic drug, uh, in which we know can make people psychotic and suicidal. Um, and, and we just sit there hour after hour after hour watching uh, football games that are filled with quasi-porn commercials. So my question is this, if this is running in your mind all the time, this type of thinking, you know, pleasure, uh, sexual innuendo, all these things, that's what you're filling your brain with and running in your mind. When the push comes to shove, what decisions are you going to make? The same one Lot made. I'm going to go to Sodom. And this is the call to come out from among them. The Bible teaches us, come out from among them, turn that garbage off. Start to fill your mind with what is holy and pure and good and even educational. I mean there's things that you can learn, uh, gardening skills or weapon skills or you know how to filter water. I mean the, 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 there, it's, there's endless amounts of information out there that you can do just to make yourself um, a valuable asset when all these things happen. And so you know, the question is easy. I mean you know, the moral collapse is here. And when we see the breakdown of law and order, we've already seen what happens like in New Orleans or other places. You're going to see the worst of human depravity come out, and um, that's when it's time. You know, if you've waited till that time to to start thinking about what I'm going to do, it's going to be way, way too late. And I guess so, if, if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna try to be ready for that, uh, one of the things you have to think about is you, you you need to think about your situational awareness. I mean, we kind of know what's going on. Uh, we know what Fox is telling us, but that's probably not the whole picture. Uh, how do we develop a, a sort of an intelligence network to where we we can sort of uh, stay informed a little bit better with uh, with things going on locally? nationally and globally, because I, I, I don't think that uh, Fox is probably a very good source for any of those things. I mean the Giggling Blonde Network? <laughs> <laughs> GBN. 
<laughs> That's what I call it, GB on the Giggling Blonde Network. Um, so, um, well, here, here's what you do. If you have groups of friends, you're going to have strengths and weaknesses in those groups of friends. Some people are going to be better at other things. Some people are going to be better at other things. So you want to find those people who have a knack for gathering intelligence, a knack for gathering world events. And then you want to assign those people that can take those world events to keep you informed. If you know, uh, for instance, there are open source. First of all, let me back up here. 80% of the information your government obtains, what they call intelligence, is human intelligence, open source intelligence. It means it's available for everybody to look at. The CIA, the FBI, all these groups of people when they gather intelligence, they're using open source intelligence. You can go and look at what people buy on eBay. You can go and look what their, their subscriptions. You can go look at their Facebook account. You can do this, that, and the other thing, and you can just start developing a lot of intelligence. So if you live in an area, first of all, I would recommend this. Go to the USGC, United States Geological Society, and they have what's called a seven-and-a-half-minute map. That's the most detailed map you can get. They make them waterproof, so you, you, know, you can actually have them out in the rain. They won't get ruined. And each one is about 7,500 meters, and you want yours to be in the middle. And there's eight others. So first of all, buy those nine uh, USGC maps. And again, you're going to have a lot of – all the roads, all the elevations. Everything is going to be on those things showing any kind of landmarks, water, all, all, everything. Buy those, and then you can start to develop just some intelligence for your area. What will we do? How will we go? Where, where's, where's good places to be if we had to leave? I mean so there's a lot of just – just good information you'll have from that. And meeting points. If we ever had to meet here, we could don't, don't use this, you know, the the actual name. Say here's sector one, sector two, A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four, five. Just start demarcating it down so you could you can do that. And that would be specific to your group, and it would be on a need to know basis. You can always share it with the people later on, but you want it in that close concentric circle of friends. So get those USGC maps. So they're not expensive. You can get all nine of them, for, I think, for 100, under a hundred dollars. I would say that's very good. And then. You know, things like we were talking about the show, Norse Corp. You know, every nation, every major nation on the planet has has developed cyber warfare. It is fourth generational warfare, maybe even fifth generational warfare. But, um, you know, we – and put it this way, in the book Lights Out by Ted Koppel, he had made the point that Russia, China, India, and the United States, all these countries have developed cyber atomic bombs that they have actually hidden in each other's nation's software infrastructures, our electrical, our, and for the United States, it could be our EBT, our Social Security, our welfare, our water, and all it takes is for one, somebody to push a button, and all of a sudden they set up a cyber warfare, and that it can actually shut down the power grid. It can turn off the EBT cards. It can turn off the Social Security. It can turn off the trucking because you you know, everything's running these computers. So um, I would follow Norse Corp, N-O-R, like Norseman, N-O-R-S-E-C-O-R-P.com. Go there, and you can actually watch live cyber warfare going on, and it's, it's staggering the level of it. So, um, and there's other open source intel things like globalsecurity.com. Uh, you can just Google uh, sit situational awareness, terrorism uh, awareness websites. There's, there's, there's lots of them out there, and you can start following what's going on. The other thing I recommend for people to do is to use Facebook. Now, after you've developed your geographic area, area of operation is what the military would call it, area of operation, and it's not that you're going on some kind of raids or anything like that, but you just want to be situationally aware of what's in your immediate geographic area. Uh, know any maybe religious institutions that could tend to be you know, violent, uh, political organizations that could tend to be violent or, or create disruption, and then start using Facebook. Go to Facebook and start following them. Because uh, a lot of times they'll post things, so you'll know when there'll be a p big political rally or a big religious rally or a big, you know, whatever. You can follow that information, and then you can also look to see who their friends are and all that. I mean, they do it against us. We might as well do it against them. So you can develop that source of information that way, and again, keep your concentric circle, that close concentric circle of people informed of what's going on. And it's not, when it's not that we're going to be walking around looking over our shoulder all the time, even though you know, we want to develop that sense of situational awareness that we're aware, but we're not walking around paranoid. We're walking around informed so that you know, we can avoid those areas where you might have high exposure uh, to a possible event. I mean, you know, this, this Easter – for instance, you know, if you go into Europe, or we saw it in Pakistan, our brothers and sisters in Pakistan, 
you know the high order probability of order of having an attack on a major holiday like that. So you plan accordingly. Uh, maybe you know if I was in maybe charge of that church, I would have broken it into smaller home churches and dispersed it so that the, I would take away the ability for an enemy to attack. Uh, but we have these big places in the United States, and you have to make a decision if you're going to be there on a day where it could be a possible um, you know, candidate for terrorism. So limit your exposure. Um, and again, with the, the person that is doing this, he needs to keep a very adequate log of what's, what's happened so that you can start to develop. And, you, and, and as you develop that log, you can start seeing trends, patterns, and you know, this is how – Law enforcement does it. That's exactly how they do it. Eighty percent of the information they gain will be the same way you gain it. And so I would encourage people to start paying attention to those things. Alternate media. Um, again, you know, what are the high value? What would be considered from, from a terrorist point of view? What would be the high value targets in your area? Um, which then goes to the point of uh, going armed. And now I will tell you this, a friend in law enforcement, and this is something I will give with a caveat that you need to make sure of your state laws, and you need to make sure you're not going out like Rambo. Nobody – God's people are never like Rambo. We're not out looking to do anything. We're looking to live peaceful lives. We're looking to live lives where we can serve our community. But on the other point, I don't want my wife or children butchered. I don't want to I, – I, as a father, I want to come home to my children so I can be their mentor, their religious teacher, and, and all the things that God calls me to be, their educator uh, to my children. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to throw this out. And again, check your state laws, your local laws, your community. Um, if, if you decide to go armed, I'm recommending, and uh, other people recommend, that you carry more in your vehicle than just a pistol. Uh, a pistol-to-pistol -pistol window contact you got two pieces of glass to go through if somebody decides to ambush you or if you're ca caught somewhere you have glass to go through, which pistols are generally inadequate. You're dealing with about 400 foot-pounds of energy on a 45, 9 millimeter, 40 caliber. Um, I recommend, and I'll say it, um, you know, the AK-47 platform, they make it in a pistol variant. Now, it is a pistol, so if you carry, if you have a handgun permit, it is a handgun. Check your state laws, though, just to make sure. Um, and the uh, Century Arms makes a uh, M92, and then there's a Century Arms Draco. I prefer the M92 because it's a 10-inch barrel, uh, and I'm going to stop here right now. You cannot put a stock on this. It does not have a stock. You cannot put a stock on it without filing the ATF um, short barrel rifle paperwork. Don't do it. If you get caught, you'll go to prison, so don't do it. But it's perfectly legal to own it. And, and a pistol variant. And again, when you're dealing with an AK-47 type thing, then you're going from 400 foot-pounds of energy to 1,600 foot-pounds of energy. Um, and just, just I, w I wanted to point that out to people that, uh, again, we're not looking, we're not looking in any way to be Johnny Rambo. We're looking to be peaceful people. We're looking to protect our families. We're looking to be fathers that we can come home to and possibly – if there is a situation where you have people that have done or are going to do wicked things to large crowds of people, you know, you can stop that. So um, uh, I do not recommend the AR pistol, AR-15 pistol platform because of the buffer tube. Again, it sticks out the back. And you can't get rid of that. Uh, the AK-47 pistol platform does not have that. So um, I think that's something people can look at. Um, I have to admit, Sportsman's Guy had a very, very good price on the um, AK-47 Draco model. It's a very, very good price on it. So just putting it out, um, you know, think about, you know, what possibly could happen during civil dis – turns of civil upset. Magazines, ammunition would be almost impossible to get. Um, people ask me how to beat gun control. Buy it now. Um, magazines, uh, we sell them. They're, you know, 10, 12 bucks for either AR or – AK magazines, and you can get ammunition from a dozen s suppliers online for, you know, a couple hundred bucks or a thousand rounds. Um, that's how you beat gun control. Also, if you have an AR platform or an AK platform, make sure you buy the spare parts. You know, one broken part can turn the thing from a rifle into a club. So uh, make sure you get those spare parts. That's the end of the first half of my interview with Bob Griswold of Ready Made Resources. Listen next week for the rest of the show. God bless and happy prepping. In seven cows, ugly and gaunt, 
Book 1, Behold Darkness and Sorrow. Daniel Walker begins having prophetic dreams about the judgment coming upon America for rejecting God's word. Through one of his dreams, Daniel learns of an imminent threat of an electromagnetic pulse attack sending the country into a technological dark age. If they want to live, Daniel and his friends must focus on faith, wits, and preparation to be ready before the lights go out. Buy your copy of Seven Cows Ugly and Gaunt, Book 1, Behold Darkness and Sorrow, by best-selling author Mark Goodwin, in paperback, Kindle, or audio edition from Amazon.com.